there's a trend going on, especially in hip hop, but even in pretty much every genre. And it's a big part of drums at knock. It's a part of every drum kit nowadays, trap music, pop music, everything. If you listen to an original TR-808 by Roland, that's the original 808. Let me see if I have that sample. I don't know if this is the exact one, but it's basically this. So this is pretty much a sample from a TR-808. It's just a bass one shot, and this is what basically made the world go crazy. The TR-808 was actually a failed drum machine that Roland put out in the 1980s. It didn't have a whole lot of control, like you couldn't really dial in your sounds too much. But years later, this sub became a staple in a lot of genres of music, mainly because of the way it rattled the speakers, rattled the trunk, rattled the subwoofer, and just gave you that bass. What's interesting is we've gone from something like this, and in 2021, it's become something more like this. Or like this. Or like this. Or like this. These are all sounds from Drums and Knock Volume 8. Let's play some from volume nine. Now let's play the original again. What do you hear as the difference? The new sounds tend to have a lot of saturation and distortion. Someone asked me about that. When you add saturation distortion, what happens? Well, if I play this original 808 sound on a phone, you are either not gonna hear it very well or hardly be able to perceive it. The original TR-808 style 808s, they're real good in cars, in clubs, and things like that. But once you bring it to a cell phone or a MacBook, it really loses that power. It loses that musical element that an 808 can add. Nowadays, we have 808 rolls and tricks and all these things. If there wasn't saturation and distortion on it, they would not be able to be played on a phone, on a laptop, and you wouldn't be able to perceive it. Imagine doing crazy 808 glides and rolls with an original TR-808, you can't. The reason why adding saturation to an 808 makes it perceivable on a phone, on a laptop, is because it's adding higher order harmonics to the waveform. When you do that, it's able to be perceived at higher frequencies. And since phones can't produce super low frequencies, they can only produce higher frequencies. That's why I believe 808s have moved in the direction of more distortion. Because when you add distortion, saturation, clipping, all these kind of things to your sounds, it's adding higher order harmonics to the sound. That's why I believe that 808s have kind of transformed from something like this to something like this. Again, someone asked me, when you do that, are you losing anything? And the answer is yes. When you add distortion and saturation to your 808s, you're losing some of the low frequency content. I think that the magic of finding a good 808 it's about finding a sound that has a balance between high frequency harmonic saturation and things like that. Saturation that can be heard at the higher frequencies and has a good solid low end. That's one downside to adding saturation to your sounds. If you overdo it with clipping, saturation, all those kind of things, it might sound real good on a phone. It might smack on a phone. But when you're in a different setting, like in a club, different settings like that, it's gonna lose some of its impact and punch. That goes with 808s, that goes with kick drums, especially. And even snares and things like that. If you clip a snare too hard or saturate a snare too hard, it could lose some of its impact, some of its punch. That's a good case for finding a balance in between saturating and clipping and maintaining some of the dynamics. Okay, Sound Goodizer. Let's see what Sound Goodizer actually does. Let's actually look at it. It sounds like it's a compressor and a maximizer. Interesting. It sounds like a brick wall limiter compressor kind of thing. The A1 keeps a lot of the low end thick. The B1 doesn't have low end. It's like compressing the top end and reducing the low end almost. C. Again, it's compressing, maybe doing a little bit of wave shaping. D is my favorite one. D 
D is the most balanced to my ears on this 808. Yeah, Lazy Eye, it sounds like it's giving it some stereo width too. A is the best for bringing out more of the bass. D sounds the most balanced. I bet B would sound good on a vocal. C, I don't know what that would sound good on. I'm not too crazy about that. A has a nice bass response. Cool. Yeah, it doesn't tell you what it's doing. Sometimes that's okay. That's why Sound Good Eyes are such a legendary plugin because it doesn't tell you anything what it's doing. Yeah, Wave Shaper is a good one. Sound Good Eyes might be doing some kind of multi band thing. Blood Overdrive is dope too. I like that one. Be